Hello, I'm Anthony. There are a pretty bewildering number of ways that you can make audio changes in Cubase permanent. Uh, I'm looking at terms like bounce, render, mix down, uh, flatten. There's actually a function called make permanent. So many different ways and they all differ slightly in both their use cases and the consequences that they have on the project that you're recording. We're gonna have a look at all of those different processes today, compare and contrast them. And if you find this video useful, check out my Patreon and channel member links below. It's an awesome way to help support my channel so that I can carry on making these videos. Okay, so I've selected a short snippet of audio from one of my songs. There's a couple of phrases here. This is sung by my wife, Pauline. Painting a scene. Phrase one. You and I. Phrase two. My love. They were recorded in different takes and comped together, and I've done some processing on them. Everything at the moment is non-destructive, so this audio is being processed in real time by Cubase. I'm going to show you various means that we can edit this audio to make those changes permanent. That's going to reduce your CPU burden. Now, it goes without saying that any edit that you make permanent pretty much closes some gates. You know, you might not be able to go back and re-edit these files in the in the future. We're not gonna worry about that today. We're just gonna have a look at the process of actually making things permanent. The first option we're gonna have a look at today is flatten real-time processing. I'm gonna double click one of these um, audio clips and head up into the very audio page. Here's that vocal phrase and I've applied some subtle very audio to this phrase. If you have a look at the note on A3, I'm gonna remove all of my warp changes. So that was the pitch as actually sung, very, very subtle difference. But as you can see, I've made some minor changes to each of these notes. Very audio and audio warp changes, so that's changes to pitch for very audio and time for audio warp are both real-time processing functions. In other words, Cubase is working this out on the fly. That is a significant CPU burden. And so we can make those changes permanent by flattening them. Take a close look at everything that we're seeing here. We've got a couple of audio events in the project window. We've got some fades and cross fades there. Down below, we've got that very audio change that you saw me just undo. You can't kind of visually see the very audio changes, but if I take them away, and then undo again, you can see the notes changing. I'm gonna make those warp changes permanent. There are actually three different places that I can make it. If I'm editing very audio, it has its own option in the choose function dropdown, flatten real-time processing. Regardless of whether or not you're in very audio or audio warp, you can head over to the process tab and there's a dedicated flatten button there as well. And finally, we have an option in the menu, audio, real-time processing, here it is as well. It doesn't matter, they're all the same function. I'm gonna execute one of them now. It pops up a box asking me to select one of one presets, very helpful, and I'll say okay. All of my Vary Audio editing has just disappeared. Vary Audio is no longer active. Let's have a quick look at our history. Here's my flatten real-time processing. Can you see that there's no change at all as far as the project editor is concerned? We're still dealing with the same events except that if we have a look at that audio clip in the pool, we're now referencing a different version of the audio. Can you see this dash 01 at the end of the clip that we're referring to? So this is the actual audio behind the scenes that the event is pointing at, and it's now pointing at a different audio file. If I undo that flatten, the dash 01 has just disappeared and now we're once again pointing at the original underscore 05 audio file and the dash 01 version has disappeared. So when we flatten, we genuinely create a brand new copy of that audio in the pool with all of those very audio and audio warp changes baked in. That's how the CPU burden is reduced. They're made permanent. It's also worth noting, of course, we do still have the original audio there. But if I was to close this project down and lose my history, I would no longer have the option, as far as the project is concerned, to get back to the original unwarped audio. That, that option is gone. While I've still got this process, this project open, I can toggle backwards and forwards simply by undoing or redoing. And as you can see, that flattening is kind of going away and coming back again. So that's the narrowest permanent change that we can make 
we're purely applying just to real-time processing, which is effectively very audio and audio warp. Real-time processing has a sibling, which is offline processing. Offline processing is also non-destructive, but this time it doesn't have to be calculated by Cubase in real time. Cubase actually makes like a copy of the audio behind the scenes, but it's effectively sort of invisible to you. I'm gonna show you an example of what we're talking about here. I'm gonna normalize this first phrase. Just press N. And as you can see, that audio file just got much bigger. It's now being played as loud as it possibly can be to the point where the audio clip itself is going up to minus 0.1 dB. That's a non-destructive process. We're using an offline processing method here to apply that normalization. So it looks like the event's been permanently made much bigger, but it actually hasn't. The way Cubase does this is to create a hidden second audio copy. So here's my project folder and in the edits folder, which is kind of supposed to be invisible to you, you're not really supposed to see this stuff, but there it is. There's the normalized WAV file created as a physical file on the hard drive. Cubase can read from that. But the whole idea of this offline processing business is just as the title implies, you, you do this in the, in the comfort of your project build. You're thinking about things, uh, you execute the normalized process. Cubase has got all the time in the world to figure that stuff out and generate the audio file. When you press play, it's now gonna play this audio clip back from that hidden edit version of the file. If I have a look at the referenced audio as far as the pool is concerned, it's still pointing at the audio pool. It's exactly the same piece of audio. So we've got this kind of disconnect between reality and perception. We can merge those two things together by making this offline process permanent. So if we head up into the audio menu, I can say make direct offline processing permanent. I could have any number of processes here. As you can see, there's all sorts of different things that I can do. At the moment, I'm just operating with normalize, but it's good enough for demo purposes. Cubase is now going to say, this is permanent. Are you absolutely sure you want to do this? The reason it's asking this question is because this is going to take the, the offline edit version of the file. Where is it? This thing. And it's going to bake that change into the audio pool. So if I say yes, now there's no longer any offline processing. You see the normalize option has disappeared. Let's have a look in the pool. There's only a single audio file. It has been given that dash O1 suffix. So the, the audio edit has just been permanently edited. Can you see, I'm circling it with the mouse. This is the section of audio that's just been normalized and it's been baked into that audio file. Now, even though Cubase warns you that this change is permanent, it kind of isn't, even though it's not visible from inside the, uh, the edit history, there's no make offline process permanent option in here. If I undo this normalize, while the project's still active and I've got access to my edit history, it reanalyzes the audio and the normalized bit of audio has actually disappeared. It's gone back to the way it was originally. So you do have a grace period while the project's still open. But if you want to change your mind and go back as long as the history is going to allow it. And that's entirely dependent on what branches and what paths you take in your project editing during that session. It is actually theoretically possible to undo an offline process, a permanent offline process change. It's not recommended. Try to pay attention to that warning. Only do this stuff if you really want the change to happen. But as things stand right now, I have actually completely removed that edit. So between those two, the flatten real-time processing and the make direct offline processing permanent, those are the two halves of the internal audio editing process that we can manipulate and basically bake in permanently to the audio files under the hood. Stepping up one level from flattening and offline processing conversion is bouncing. What we're going to do here is we're going to convert the event itself into a brand new event with a brand new audio clip behind the scenes. So here's the first phrase and it's um, DO5 in the pool. If I select the second phrase, there's DO4. So we can see the two takes that formed this final comped version. They both have very audio processing on them. As you can see, we've got crossfades in the project edit as well. If I select 
those two phrases and press O, which is the keyboard shortcut for bounce audio and say replace. Now a brand new audio event's been created. Here's bounce selection, by the way, from the menu perspective. Let's have a look at that in the pool. And now here is my new composite audio take with all of those changes baked in. If we have a look at it from the very audio perspective, there is no very audio. Cubase just had to process that in real time. So here's all of the audio in a single phrase. And there's no option to reset any very audio changes because there aren't any. So bouncing takes all of your audio editing and your project editing and combines them all together into a brand new audio file. It's worth also saying actually that the original audio files are still there. Here's four and five. Once I close this project down and I lose access to my project history, because this is all currently still reversible. When I close this project down and reopen it, I won't be able to get back to those original audio clips without going into the, the pool and manually reconstructing it, which is a massive headache and you really don't wanna to have to go there. So once again, just be absolutely sure that you wanna do this stuff before you go ahead and do it. Very often what I will actually do is create a brand new duplicated copy of the audio track, duplicate the entire track with all of its events, leave the original one completely untouched, and then you can do any amount of editing that you want on your duplicate copy and just mute the original one. Now that's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just do it very quickly just to really drive the point home. So here's the original audio back. If I now duplicate the entire track, there it is. And I can now bounce my copies and the original audio has been left completely alone. So there's the entire original audio track. I could mute it. That's one possibility. Or I can disable the selected track, hide it from my project entirely. And now it's this kind of archived, no CPU burden version of the song that is the, is the original audio exactly as it was processed. I can then freely do whatever I want with the second copy. And if I ever make a complete mess of it, I can always go back to the original. Let's throw all that stuff away. And we're back to my original phrase again. Continuing up the hierarchy from bounce, we have rendering. So what rendering is gonna do is everything that all of the previous processes have done, plus optionally baking in stuff from our mix console. So now we're talking about insert effects, send effects, pan settings, basically anything from the mix console can be incorporated into the audio file as a final finished product. Let's have a look at some of these options. Now, before you perform a render operation, you need to set up your render settings. That's in the edit menu, uh, render in place. I have keyboard shortcuts set up for these, but it's render settings that we want to go to first. For my own personal use, the top two in this processing list are pretty much the only ones that I generally use. Dry is gonna basically perform effectively a bounce. It's gonna create a brand new track in the project. It's gonna copy the audio across whatever part of the project I've selected. And it's gonna bring forward all of the elements from that track onto the new track. Let's see that. So here's my new track. When we head into the channel settings, here are my inserts, here are my sends. But the audio itself has been fully converted in exactly the same way that we did, that we did when we bounced. It's also muted the original audio, as you can see. That's one of the options. Here we are, source tracks, mute the source tracks. I've just undone that process. We'll head back into the settings menu. This time I'm gonna choose channel settings. This is gonna bring forward the insert effects. We'll just close this for a moment. Have a look at the original track. The de and the compressor that are currently on this track are gonna get baked into the audio and those uh, insert effects will no longer be required. So let's do that. And now when we have a look at this audio, there are no longer any insert effects. The send effects are still there. Shouldn't be too much surprise to you that if we go up one level again for the complete signal path, this time the send effects will be baked in. Now they include delay and reverb, so we need to add some extra time onto the end of the audio to account for those extra um, tails. And here is my five second tail. 
Let's have a look at the audio. And now no insert or send effects at all. So rendering is right at the top of the hierarchical pyramid because it's doing everything that those previous processors have done, plus more, plus stuff from the mix console. Finally, and this is really a project-wide thing rather than an individual audio clip, but it's worth talking about because it is in the same family of processing, we have mix down. So from the file menu, I can export audio mix down. Again, there's much too much in this window to talk about today, but it's just another example of making something permanent. If I select the stereo out bus, which is the primary master output right at the end of the chain, as my only destination, this is the single mix down target. I can say everything inside the locators, which means I need to get them right, you know, set them up very carefully to be the entire span of your song. Now I'm gonna generate an output file, an MP3 or a WAV file. I do this right at the end. This is the very last thing that I do. After I've set my minus 14 um, loudness units target for the entire piece, I'll do an audio mix down, which generates these physical files at the end of the process. It can, however, be used as an intermediate process because you can ask it to output an audio track. So if I do a mix down to an audio track, it's gonna create a copy of the entire song. I can then use that as a comparison. I can do further editing on the project and AB between this audio file that represents the entire song at that snapshot of time with whatever I've done subsequently. So it is a processing tool in its own right. You can also output stems, for instance. You could um, send all of your guitars to a single track, all of your drums to a single track. Lots of different options that you can do with Mixdown. So this is, I suppose, technically even higher than rendering because this is operating at the entire project level. But once again, another example of creating a permanent audio file from something that's either temporary or in some sort of edited form. The difference between the mix down and all of the others is that it's not having any effect, any impact on any of the underlying audio or projects. It's simply collecting all of that information together and creating a brand new version. And that's us done. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please hit like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.